What's up guys? I'm back, finally. Say hello to Jimmy Bronzebeard, oh boy. And we're at the tavern. Uh, it's a good place to be, you know, in a tavern, especially in a pirate game. But um, yeah, this is just going to be a video. I'm going to show you um, the new home base or the main hub on the PvE official server on Atlas. Um, bit random because obviously the last Atlas video you would have seen I was playing on the single player. I was doing a single player playthrough but during the Steam sales over Christmas um, a load of my friends that I play games with have all got Atlas. Finally! I've been telling for ages how good it is. They finally gave in and got it and they've fallen in love with it. And uh, yeah, so I started playing on official with them. Um, obviously I've not made a video for a month or so, nearly two months, um, I'll explain that at the end, I don't want to get bogged down in that now, so if you're a subscriber or you've been following the channel for a little while and you wonder where I've been, stay around to the end, I'll explain at the end. Uh, but for now, back to the matter in hand, this is the tavern, uh, our main hub, this is the original base we set up that we started out on. Obviously it's grown a lot since um, we started, that hut with the fat roof down there, the yellow fat roof next to the big gates, was our original hut on this island um, and it's expanded all the way out here into this big dock area. Uh, looking a little bit empty at the moment, all the ships are out and about all over the Atlas and at some of the other bases which I'll show you in other videos. Uh, but yeah, I thought this would be a good place to start, like I said it's our home hub, this is what we started with and it made a massive difference having this set up um, before we tried to advance through the game. Um, so let's take a look. Like I said, this is the tavern. It's called the Soggy Bottom Tavern. Oh boy. Uh, does absolutely nothing, serves no purpose. Um, I was just bored one day and uh, I wanted a tavern. Uh, Jamie built a tavern at one of the other bases, one of my mates. And uh, it was super cool when we see it and we've been to a few other little towns and uh, seen some similar stuff. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own. These are just the uh, barrel stores actually, which I haven't had a chance to fill up yet because I actually hit the build limit on this area, believe it or not. 8,500 pieces or something. Um, we've maxed out the build area, which I was quite shocked at, but you know, it makes sense. We don't want to lag everyone out. Um, so yeah. It's, like I said, this is the tavern. We've got the uh, <laughs> house specials. <laughs> Sweet semen rum and semen special brew ale. Oh boy. The reason it's called that is because we're the salted semen. Oh yeah. And uh, we only serve the freshest semen beverages. Because we handcraft it, you know? It's the semen beverages. We serve only the finest handcrafted rum and ale. There's a sweet semen rum box. There's some rum in there. And we've got the semen special brew ale and there is some ale in there. Oh boy. And there's the grill because everyone wants a steak with their beer. Here's a couple of uh, spare crew off one of the ships we had. Um, I need one of these but my boat's not here. I need to put him on so uh, they're waiting in the tavern for me. And up here we've got the bedrooms. Now again this was mainly just for the um, decor really of the uh, tavern. It also does actually serve a purpose, that being we've got loads of beds in here with storage boxes so we can jump to different bases and leave our stuff in a box and come back and grab it later so we don't lose anything. Um, so that's quite handy. And this is the way up to the tower which I will show you when we've been around the rest of the base because uh, there's something pretty cool up there. Now, back outside if I can get down the stairs. Pow. Like I said, this was our main dockyard. Um, it changed to this after it was originally just this length of dock, basically. Got the uh, gallows here, which Jamie built, which are pretty cool. I do like them. And they're actually handy. If you're really low on he health um, and you get the annoying um, broken bone uh, debuff, it's just nice to be able to string yourself up and uh, spawn a fresh character, basically. The bank does absolutely nothing on this island. We're playing, this is the lawless, uh, lawless region. So the bank does nothing. It's just there to add to the aesthetics of the place. And uh, <laughs> a bit controversial, but it's a pirate game. And uh, it's a slave market. I thought I'd add to the um, feel of like the pirate-esque type set we've got going. Um, and yeah, I was going to fill these up with different pirates at some point, but I've not got around to it. That's just, again, it's just for the uh, effect of the place more than anything. It serves no purpose at all. 
this was our first galleon, Midnight. It's only here temporarily. Um, Jamie, who's busy down in one of the other grids, has come back to collect some stuff, and he's left it here overnight. And uh, there's one of the other guys, Briggs, which is not in use at the moment because he's playing another game. And one of our early Shooners, which is called Puna. <laughs> I think that was actually the first boat um, my brother and Jamie built. And uh, yeah, it got us some gold early on in the game. Like I said, most of our ships are here. These are some just the original ones. Um, Her that's Hercules just there. I'm not going to show you him because he's quite special. And uh, there's Luna just there, which you can't see the nameplate for because I've got the thing off. There you go, there's Luna, which is Rad Dude's um, new ship. I think, I can't remember what he's using that for, but uh, we'll look at that another time. And this is the blacksmith. This is where we've been crafting different things, although we're not using it as much now. Um, but this was really good when we was using it. you got all these boxes here, and what you would do is um, run down this little runway and stop there, and you could unload stuff into these boxes nice and easily and carry on farming, and someone else could be in here crafting bits up for whatever we needed. Uh, and this was the outbound orders box, um, which does serve a purpose. When I was building stuff, I'd put it in there, or someone would craft a load of stuff up and put it up there, and we could come and take it and carry on building or use it for ships or whatever we were doing. Uh, and this is the uh, leather work in the cloth area and the little store we've set up which I haven't actually started stocking yet um, I just put it in uh, just to have it there for later on not selling anything yet I'm hoping to sell some you know some uh, high tier armor and stuff in there maybe at some point but uh, again really it was just for the aesthetics and that's a uh, touching cloth oh yeah touching cloth so you don't have to <laughs> uh, yeah so that's the um, dock front, the harbour if you like, like I said that's Hercules there and I'm super happy with that ship, done um, this really really well early game um, it's a cargo ship, uh, although you haven't got the cargo racks on it but um, I'll show you that another time, I want to do a whole video on that and when I do do that, which I'll mention later on, um, again like I said I haven't done a video for a little while so if you're a subscriber or you follow the channel stay around to the end I'll explain where I've been and also I'll explain some plans and some changes I want to make to the channel and um, as part of that I will explain that I'm going to do a video with Hercules and do a tour of it and how I've built it and show you the idea behind it really and then I'm going to go on single player and rebuild it uh, in creative mode um, so I haven't got to farm up all the stuff so yeah, that's Hercules. Like I said, we'll go into that another time. This is something I added on later to make things easier, getting um, to and from the loading docks there. Because them ramps you see are for loading the galleons. Um, and they're not actually um, that great. Uh, we've developed much better docks since we put these in. Like I said, these are the um, early game stuff. I'm showing you this now um, because we've got a few bases I want to show you, and obviously I don't want to start with the good stuff and go back to the not so good stuff. Although I love this base, obviously the uh, we advanced quite a lot in our building techniques. Um, so this is a this has been an extension to make things easier to turn around up here, and we would just literally load up the galleons and uh, sail them off. And this, like I said, this bridge was put in to make things quicker, so we can just run across, dump stuff, run back, and carry on farming. Um, and just there, where that uh, shop sign is, there's a Another walkway, which is what we went down earlier, is um, the original walkway. Uh, we've got the animal pen there, which I'll show you now. This is um, where we've been keeping the pigs and cattle. Uh, the cattle are really cool early game for getting milk and obviously increasing your blue vitamin, which I can't remember which one it is right now, but it's the blue bar. And the pigs are for farming fertilizer for our garden, which is over here, although um, I've neglected it a bit the last few days so it's getting a bit low but we've got um, wheat maize, uh, cactus just because I wanted to see what the cactus was when you grew it obviously it was cactus but I wanted to see if it was useful for anything we've got maize, we've got sugar beet and we've got chilies uh, all are very handy for taming different stuff and just in general for having around uh, for your nutrition um, I think a lot of people neglect their nutrition. It's actually good if you keep your nutrition balanced. You get a nice little buff. Um, I can't remember exactly what it increases, but I believe it's like health regen, stamina regen. Um, I think it gives you a small fortitude buff, which is nice in some of the other regions we're in, um, especially the region I spend most of my time in, which is polar. Um, the extra fortitude is really nice. So, yeah, that's the uh, little farming area. These are our refining forges, obviously, where we cook up ingots. Again, not really using that as much these days because um, we've expanded out. 
And like I said, this is our home hub. We still use this to collect stuff and send things out or um, things from up north come down here. We leave it here because this is an L6, which I'll show you on the map. Um, yeah, this is on L6, which isn't uh, the center, but it's um, the central to where we were originally playing. And it's quite central to everything we've got at the moment. Um, so anything from up north in N1, you can see the... Uh, symbol up there on the N1 for the ships and N2 that's where our two of our outposts are so everything um, comes down into L6 and goes off to G8 which you can see over there which is where we're setting up a trade hub um, it's a really busy region we found so far and uh, we're setting up a load of stores there and stuff so and again this is on the uh, EU PVE official which is um, a whale something I can't remember exactly what it's called can I see on the escape thing whale solitude that's a serve we're playing on in G8 we've got a nice big uh, market area and a little base set up there that we're using as a trading hub and this is in L6 so like I said this is our original base and we've used it as a hub now for like transport basically we like I said we drop stuff off here and cart it off to different places and vice versa it's coming up from south we drop it here bring something down from up north and take something back from here to the north um, that's how it's been working. And this is our original hut. This is a little um, a later on addition we put on to get up to the alternative boxes where we were collecting the different woods, thatches and fibres and stuff like that to make the higher level items. Um, instead of having to run up and through the stairs, I just put this ramp in so you could back up a trailer into it and just quickly chuck stuff in. Uh, but this is the original room. This is where everything started on this island, just this part here. The only thing that's changed is um, the smithy was over this side, and these boxes weren't here. We've made this so it's a nice little mirrored craft. Now you've got wood thatch and fibre right here, and the same on the other side, if I go around here. you got wood thatch fibre just there, and uh, obviously the smithy to craft stuff. And uh, yeah, nice little layout. Everything's labelled so it's really easy to find stuff. Um, quickly and everyone knows where things go no reason for anyone to um, just dump stuff, do you know what I mean? you can just organise things nice and easily and uh, just makes everything nice and smooth uh, got a few bookshelves here where we uh, collect maps and music and blueprints but most stuff's being collected up north now because that's predominantly where me and uh, Rad Dude are playing which we've been doing a lot of uh, exploring and map collecting and hunting and stuff so um, like I said, everything gets bought down and, and stored here, but we obviously work out where everything's going and, and ship it off accordingly. This is the food storage area, looking a bit sorry for itself. Uh, I've run out of salt and um, only just realised when I come over here to do this video. So I uh, need to top that up. Got a load of chickens, uh, which we actually claimed most of these from a base that got abandoned. And uh, just bought them back here. Not really had much use for the chicken eggs, but you know they might be handy at some point. And this was our original garden before we had that one. We had a few crop plots up here, which are now empty. But um, early game when we started, this was super helpful. And a nice little setup, really. You've got everything nice and organised and tiered and easy to get to. We've got the uh, irrigated grill that my brother built. Nice, um, effective cooking method. Super efficient for making dyes. Because it's irrigated, you haven't got to keep filling up a water bottle and making things. And obviously the same goes for any foods you need to make that require water, like the uh, ales and stuff. Um, this was our sheep pen, but for some reason we've had a bug where all our sheep despawned. Um, we had enough sheep to, every time we sheared them, get a thousand hide, which was super handy. Because um, there's a lot of creatures on this island, but they're fairly spread out and it makes it hard to collect fibre, to be honest. Um, hide even so that was really handy and they've despawned I don't know why this was our original like holding pen and walkway around to the back although this bit started collapsing um, need to fix this but the reason I haven't fixed it and the reason another reason why I'm starting with this base for the first video back is because I'm gonna remodel it soon this is all gonna change and I wanted to show it you before I changed it so you could see um, what we started out with and how it grew like I said it was just this hut originally and we were parking the boats on the beach. Can't get up there. <laughs> yeah, we were parking the boats on the beach right under where this decking is. I think this deck was there. We used to moor up next to this. And then this all grew out that way. And then it all grew out that way when uh, someone's base degenerated and uh, we took over the land. This is, again, serves no purpose. It was just me being a little bit creative and messing about. 
Nordwatch OVU. Praise the sea gods. It's a church. Yes, it is. Uh, Nord protect us and grant us great wealth. Praise be to the mighty sea gods. You need a bit of luck in this game. You quite often get atlas as we like to say, and that's a saying that come from Ark. We used to like to say we got Ark, where things just bug out or go tits up really quickly, and there's not much you can do about it. So you need a lot of uh, need a lot of help from the sea gods, and Nord is a Viking sea god and uh, a super cool god. He's also the god of wealth, so it's really handy for a pirate game. The god of sea and the god of wealth. So yeah, this is uh, just the church I made, and these little images I'm really happy with. I actually um, found the images and then imported them into a program and converted them, and then imp imprinted them into the game files so that I could post them on canvases, which is the same way you decorate your sails, which I'll show you in another video. And this is just the bell tower. Unfortunately, no bell, because there's no bell in this game, but either way, it's still cool. And I might, when I upgrade this base, convert that to stone. I think that'll look really nice in stone. But yeah, pretty cool little thing. Don't know what you guys think of it. Again, it was just something I'd done when I was bored one day. And I'm super happy with this, although this is going to change. These bridges lead over to our dockyards. And uh, we've managed to get these all covered in like this. So you can get around them nice and easily without having to climb up and down stuff or fall off of things. If you do fall in, it's easy to get back on top. And um, yeah, we've built a few ships in here, so it all definitely works. Although we've found a much nicer way of doing this now. And uh, one of the bases I'll show you up north is got a very nice dockyard. It's all synced in and it's got steps around it which match the steps inside the dockyard. And I'm super happy with it, so I can't wait to show you that. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do something similar here. Uh, at some point, I'm not doing it just yet. Been busy doing other things, but yeah, these are our ship crafting area. This is what Rad Dude set up. Really efficient and simple uh, ship crafting area, so we can build everything we want right next to ships and chuck it on. And we've also in that forest got another crafting area. And what some of the guys have been doing is uh, sitting in that forest, crafting all their planks and decks, and then carting all the decks and planks back over here, making all their sails and then building their ship. Although they all tend to build their ships in bits, and I like to uh, save everything up and do it in one go. Uh, but that's just a personal preference. But yeah, this is uh, really, really efficient, this shipyard. It was great when we were using it all the time. And this is a a um, holding pen for the animals that Rad Dude built, and this is awesome. Super big, super open. You can get plenty of animals in here, and there was a lot in here at one point. Although, again, like the ships, they've all spread out over the globe. And, um, yeah, it served us really, really well, and it still does serve us really well. So this is a great little uh, addition to the base. I say little, it's rather big. So, yeah, that's been good. This was a, an original um, forest craft now we put in to, like I said, craft planks and stuff. And this is really handy, having it this close to the wood. Um, because this is so dense here, we, look, I mean, you can see all this fibre. I've actually turned my ground clutter off at the moment um, for another area I was working in where there's a lot of ground clutter hiding a lot of the fibre nodes. Um, fibre nodes? Fibre bushes. So I turned the ground clutter off. So everything you can see here is farmable. So everything is farmable. It's nuts. It's so dense with vegetation and wood and thatch. And also metal, which I'll show you in a minute. And if you look on that cliff over there, you can see the little purple gems. That's exactly what they are. They're gems, but actually rubies, which is super handy. So yeah, this was the original one we put in, like I said, for crafting planks and stuff. Before we had that animal pen and, and stuff like that, we used to run up here and run back with everything. Because there was a base between here and our hut down there. Um, and there's another one there. And this is the latest one that Rad Dude put in. Um, I'll explain that weird walkway in a moment, but um, yeah, again, this kind of setup is brilliant because you can bring your bear or your horse in here with your trailer, unload or load up whatever you're doing into these boxes. You've got all your resource boxes this side and your outbound stuff this side. So these is where this is where we were storing um, building parts, ship parts, etc., and loading it on a cart and taking it back. And these are all the um, uh, resource boxes that we were filling up as we were farming away and obviously the smithy where we were creating stuff and you can see there's a fair bit of metal in there nice little chunk of metal in there and crude oil because we've got crude oil just on this island around the corner and this walkway has been put in because of them gates 
Now, that company is the Royal Guard, and I don't mean to name and shame them, but this stuff they've built is absolutely pointless. Uh, there's one of the oil nodes there, the crude oil. But we've also got these metal nodes. These are copper. And these go all the way around this cliff, and they go all the way back down to our hut. And, obviously, they go around here, which we were fenced off from, and we couldn't get through to them, um, which was really annoying when... Um, we were trying to like farm resources up, obviously. So uh, Rad Dude put this walkway in to stop and building any further this way and completely boxing us out of the island, um, which obviously does work. Bit of an eyesore. Unfortunately, it's one of the things you've got to do to try and protect yourself and the other guys that are here because there's another couple of bases next to us. And um, I know our, our base is quite a monstrosity, um, but it's all open and anyone can get access to it and obviously we don't block anything leave access to all the resources but yeah that's the L6 main hub the main base um, and the base that started everything off for us and this is where it ends just here Tim just built a little pier when he was like messing around with building when he started he's got a little catapult and some blisters up there just for effect and this is the salvage yard. This is a few of the original ships we had that Tim's left here. These are uh, Rad Dude ships. So yeah, that's L6. That's the Salted Seaman's home base, which we've now expanded and left. Um, but again, we're still using it as a transport hub, basically, and a crafting area um, for the stuff further down south. The other thing with them walls, which I didn't mention, is that since they've put them in, it's made um, the islands... A little bit laggy and made rendering a little bit of an issue, which it wasn't before. But uh, never mind. That's the uh, the base. Anyway, I hope you guys like it. There's the full picture of the tower that kind of looks like a penis, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> but whatever. Um, and I'll head up there in a second. But this is the little stables, and there's Talos, one of the horses. I don't know where the other ones have gone. Um, but yeah, there's Talos. And that's the uh, the tavern stables. Again, really it was mainly just to add on to the tavern. But it's also so there was a horse in there to run down to the um, animal pen to jump on one of the other animals to do stuff. And then you can ride the horse back and jump on your ship. Save you a bit of time. And let's go back in the soggy bottom. I didn't mention earlier, we've got one of our crew members playing the accordion. And she doesn't stop playing. If you don't know and you wondered, you can just put an accordion in there. I've a tree. Um, get a, a sheet of music and put on the accordion and get them to equip it and then you can tell them by pressing E to stop or start playing a song. The first loop they play, or if I think if you stand in it from start to finish of a loop, you get the buff of the song. Um, but after that you don't get it again, so she just keeps playing that forever. But I will head to the top of the tower quickly. And I'm at the top of the tower. Oh boy. It's actually my own lighthouse because we couldn't put a lighthouse on our um, area because there was one too close to us. And uh, I thought I'd build my own. And on the top there, you've got access up here. I'll climb up there to show you guys. Pow. Open this little door. Close it behind me and you can walk up. It's just a pillar with four lights on which I've painted red to give it a red light looking effect. Obviously, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just in in here on these posts, which also hold the roof up, I've put some brackets with lights on, and they're just normal lanterns with a tan colour on them to make it um, not quite a bright white, but not the not the um, awful yellow colour that the lanterns normally are. This is the leap of faith, um, feeling lucky, which I didn't show you earlier. Uh, down there, you can see a swimming pool I built. I'll show you that when we go down. We've got the lifeguard thing on the right there, and you can just about make out a very faint red cross, which is what you've got to aim for when you walk out of here. And as you hit the water, you've got to make sure you hold W or the forward if you're using a controller, so that you're moving as you hit the water, otherwise you sink to the bottom and die. Um, <laughs> hence what it's called, the leap of faith. And this side is for simply jumping out of with a glider seat. Oh boy. Leave Glider at Blacksmith on flight completion. Oh, yeah. And this idea I stole from another base that me and Jamie visited. Um, up in G8, I believe it was. And it's uh, called Port Royal. And uh, the guys set up a trading 
station there. It's like a harbour and little town. It looks really, really smart. And he had a tower there with a flight school in it, which was quite funny, I thought. So I uh, got my own little take on it. Um, and there's a little box outside the blacksmith where we can put glider suits back in. That is the tower. I'll put a little glider suit on. Hopefully it's dark enough now we'll see the lights as we're flying around. And uh, yeah, that's the L6 base. It's a bit foggy and ideal. I'd like to better um, picture for you guys, but is what it is. Now I have some trouble with these glider suits, but hopefully this will work. Nope. Oh boy. Wow, well, I didn't die. <laughs> I'll try again. That's night time now, so this tower will at least look nice. I don't know what the rest of the base will look like. Come on! It's so simple. It's equipped. Got it! Oh boy, there we go. And there's the uh, the tower with its red light and tan lights underneath it. A little bit laggy up here. There's the uh, swim pool down there. Oh, I didn't show you the little thatch buildings. Because um, before this other stuff was here, this place looked a bit like Mauritius or something. Can I land bang on the runway thing? Oh, almost. Ah, smooth landing. That's what we like. And uh, yeah, we thought, because it looked a bit like Mauritius, so it looked like them little um, huts out above the ocean. So we made our own little ones on it, which looked kind of cool. And there's our swimming pool. Pow! Which is pretty good. Pretty happy with that. It was actually Rad Dude's idea. He made a shallow one out the front there, which we've had to take away to give us some more um, <laughs> pieces back. So like I said, I hit the building limit. Uh, we've got a deep one in there. Ah, there we go. That's what it was meant to look like. <laughs> the little fires in each hut and the cooking fire at the back. And uh, yeah, it was just for a look, really. Does absolutely nothing. Looks kind of cool, though. But yeah, that's uh, the base in its entirety. The reason why I wanted to show you this as well and explain, uh, and what I wanted to explain was it's really important on a game like this to get a hub set that you can work out of and fall back to when things go wrong. Because um, without it, it's really hard to get back up on your feet. But with it, you can be back and sailing within a few hours. And we're playing on official. So all this you can see, obviously, I've built with my mates on official. Um, and my mates have helped build this, but most of this I've done on my own. Uh, so it's completely doable. This isn't like anything too extreme. Obviously, it's all out of wood. And I obviously, I'm... Um, not saying this is anything spectacular, uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. And there has a lot. There's a lot of work gone into it. But my point is, um, this is all unofficial, so you can do this nice and simply. And again, when you see the other bases, which especially um, the one in N1 is a lot more complex than this. Although it's smaller, it's a lot more complex, and there's a bit more to it. And it's, I think, um, one of the best designs I've ever come out with. And it weren't really a design; it was kind of working with what we had there. Um, Again, all on official, and that's out of stone. So it's all doable with a bit of time and effort. Stay around and look forward to seeing that. I can't wait to show you guys and see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below what you think to this base and to my um, roleplay style building, which my mates love to trash me for. But I don't care. I enjoy doing it. It's super fun and um, really satisfying when it's done, even if your tower does look like a penis. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers for watching.